Hello everyone, welcome to Unit 3, Day 8. Uh, today we're going to continue uh, learning how to solve equations. Uh, this time we're going to see the distributive property mixed into some of those uh, equations that we need to solve. All right, so we going to call this solving with distributive property. All right, our goals today are to solve multi-step equations uh, and use the distributive property to help solve equations. And then we also want to understand what a solution to an equation is. Right? All right, so solving an equation means that we are finding the variable, finding the value of the variable that makes the equation true. All right, so some helpful tips and reminders that were brought up in yesterday's lesson about solving equations. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must do to the other. So if you subtract three from one side, you must subtract three from the other. If you divide by five, you must divide by five on the other side, all right? You will know when you are done solving an equation when the variable is all by itself. All right, so you'll have x equals some number, all right, or z equals some number. All right, whatever the variable is, it should be by itself with a number on the other side of the equal sign. All right, you want to use opposite operations to move things from one side to the other. So for instance, if you have a positive 6 that you need to move to the other side of the equal sign, you would subtract 6. All right, so we'll talk more about opposite operations in the examples below. Remember PEMDAS but backwards, all right? So when you're working through an equation, it is more advantageous to work through the order of operations backwards. So you wanna start by undoing any subtraction or addition first, then multiplication or, or division, all right? And try to simplify both sides of the equation before moving things. So if you have any like terms or parentheses or anything like that, those need to be cleared first before you move anything from side to side. Let's look at some examples. Right, so in our first equation here, we have 3z plus 8 equals 29. So what I like to do is I like to draw a line. Oops, I can draw a better line. There we go. This separates the two sides of the equation. So if I move anything from one side of that line to the other side of the line, it must be done with an opposite operation. So remember PEMDAS, I like to go backwards, right? So I see a three times Z and I see a plus eight. So I'm gonna take care of the plus eight first before I try and take care of the multiplication. What I mean by that is, since we have a plus eight, I'm gonna subtract eight to move it to the other side. Now remember, whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. Right, so since I subtract 8 over here, I'm going to subtract 8 over here. Okay, so the 8s will cancel out and become 0, leaving us with just 3z. Okay, and 29 minus 8 leaves us with 21. Now we have 3 times z. So remember our goal is to get z by itself here. So I have this 3 and it needs to move to the other side of the equation. So since it's multiplying, I'm gonna undo multiplication with division. So since we're multiplying by three, I would divide by three. And whatever I do on one side of the equation, I must do on the other side. Threes cancel, leaving me with just c. And then 21 divided by three is seven. Okay, so now I know I'm done because the variable is by itself with a number on the other side. So this is my solution z equals 7. Well, what does that mean? Well, think about our original equation. All right, so 3, let's say we have 3z plus 8 equals 29. And remember, a solution to an equation is a number that will make this equation true. So if I take this 7 and I plug it in for z, it should make my equation be true. Watch what happens. 3 times 7, right, because the z will get replaced with a 7, plus 8 equals 29. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 plus 8 is 29. And now look at our equation. 29 equals 29, which is true. Okay, So that's how I know I got the right solution. That's what a solution does for us. All right. So let's try another one. So notice in this one that I have two terms here. Actually, I have three terms, right? 3x, 6x, and a minus 5. And, but on this side of the equation, we have two of these terms that can be combined. 3x and 6x both have the same variable raised to the same power. So these can be added together. 
3x and 6x combine to give us 9x. Now we still have a minus 5 over here, so I'm going to say 9x minus 5 equals 22. So I did this part 5 here, right? I simplified this side a little bit by combining like terms. Now I'm going to start to get this x by itself, right? Our goal is to get the variable by itself. So I'm going to start moving things from one side of the equation to the other. So I'm going to start with the minus 5 because I'm doing my PEMDAS backwards, right? I'm, I'm looking for additions and subtractions that I can undo. So minus 5, the opposite of that would be to add 5. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So the 5's cancel, leaving us with a 9x. And then 22 plus 5 is 27. Okay. So now I have a 9 that needs to go, right? Because I want x by itself. So x times 9, right? The opposite of timesing by 9 or multiplying by 9 would be to divide by 9. Right. So if I divide by 9, they cancel over here, leaving me with just x. And then 27 divided by 9 is that gives me my solution. All right now, if I were to take this 3 and plug it in for both instances of x here, we would get uh, the same result as we did over here. We would get a true statement at the end. Okay. Let's look at another one. So again, you'll notice the first thing that I do every time is I draw that line just to distinguish my two sides. All right. Now, this one is a little bit uh, tricky because it's got a variable on both sides. And you'll, you'll remember our goal is to get uh, the variable x by itself on one side of the equation. Well, it might be a little tricky for students because you have an x on both sides. So you have to make a decision. What side do you want your x's to be on? So let's move the x's to the left side, right? So we'll put all the x's over here and we'll move everything else to the right side, all right? So I'm going to start, I'm going to, I, I want to move this 8x over here with the 3x. Since it's a positive 8x, to do that, I'm going to have to subtract 8x. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. Okay. So I like to work left to right when I start getting into longer equations like this, right? So I'm going to do 3x minus 8x, right? So 3 minus 8 leaves us with a negative number. So we're going to have negative 5x plus 6. And then over here, 8x minus 8x is just 0, so those cancel, and all that's left is a 26. Okay, So now this looks a lot more like these equations that we were doing up here, right? Really wasn't much harder, it's just that we had to move that extra term with an x over to the other side. Okay, Now I can do what we did in the last problems, right? I can start with this plus 6 and subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. So the 6 is cancel, and we get negative 5x equals, and then 26 minus 6 is 20. Okay, so here on the left side, we still have a multiplication going on, right? So we have negative 5 times x equals 20. So I want to undo this multiplication of negative 5. So the opposite of multiplying by negative 5 is dividing by negative 5. Okay, and whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So the negative fives cancel, and we get x equals 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. So again, I'm not going to do this with every single problem, but if I were to take this negative 4 and plug it in for both values of x up here, we would end up with a true statement at the end, just like we did here. All right, so don't lose sight of what this number does for us. Right? It makes this thing true, right? which is a valuable uh, asset in applied problems. All right? So let's give this one a try. You might recognize that we have some parentheses here, and we've been working a lot with multiplication and the distributed property. All right? So for this one, I'm going to use my box to help me multiply this left-hand side. All right? So before we can do anything, we've got to get rid of those parentheses. So I'm going to set up a box. And since I have one term in this and two terms in this, I'm going to set up a one by two box. Okay. So I'm going to put the six on the left and the three x plus three 
along the top. Okay. So when I do 6 times 3x, we get 18x, and 6 times 3, which is 18. So this will turn into 18x plus 8. And we still have a 162 over here. Okay. Oop, that should be an 18. Sorry about that. All right, so now this equation, uh, we start off with parentheses, but now this looks a lot like what we did over here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this plus 18 and I'm gonna undo the plus 18. So I'm gonna subtract 18 from both sides. Okay, and if you need to, grab a calculator. All right, so we're gonna end up doing 162 minus 18. So you'll get 144 over here. Okay, so if I cancel, 18x equals 144. And then to finish this off, we have a multiplication of 18, so I need to undo that. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 18. All right, so the 18's cancel, and we get x equals 144 divided by 18, which is eight. So there's our solution. All right, let's kick it up one more notch here. We got two more problems I want to work through and then we'll be done. Okay, so we've got seven times x plus seven plus three, all right, and a negative six times x minus four minus six. There we go, draw my line. All right, so notice that we have a multiplication here and we also have another multiplication over here, much like what we had in this problem. It's just that we have two instances of it that we need to take care of, okay? So I'm gonna use the distributed property this time to help me with that. Rather than using the rectangle or the boxes, I'm gonna use the distributed property and I'm gonna distribute the seven to the x and to the seven. All right, so when I do that, I got seven times x, which is seven x, and seven times seven, which is 49. And then we still have this plus three over here. Do not be tempted to do this, okay? That would be bad. That three is not inside of the parentheses. It is not being multiplied by the seven, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing over here on the right side. I've got a negative six being distributed to each term inside of the parentheses there. So negative six times x is negative six x. Negative six times negative four is plus 24, right? Negative times a negative gives you a positive. And then we still have a minus six on the end, okay? Now I'm gonna look through this line that I just made here and I'm gonna combine any like terms that I can. So you'll notice that you have a 49 and a three that can be combined, right? So 49 plus three is 52. So I'm just gonna write seven X plus 52. And then over here, we have negative six x, but the 24 and the negative six can be combined, right? So 24 minus six is 18, okay? And then this is just like this other problem that we did over here, we've got to make a decision about what side we want the x's to go to, all right? So again, I'm gonna decide to put the x's on the left, all right? So that means I need to move this negative six x all right, so since it's a negative 6x, I will add 6x to both sides. And then let's see what we get. So we got 7x plus 6x, that's 13x plus 52. Over here, these will cancel, and all we have left is 18. All right, so now I'm gonna move the 52 over with the 18. All right, so to do that, I have to do the opposite. So I'm gonna subtract 52. There you go. These will cancel. All that's left is 13x. And then over here I have 18 minus 52. All right, so I might grab my calculator and help me out with that. Let's see what we get. We got 18 minus 52. And we get negative 34. There we go. And then the last step here, we, we are currently multiplying by 13. So to undo that, I would have to divide by 13, so 13's cancel, and we get x equals negative 34 divided by 13. Let's see what that is. I'm gonna grab my calculator again. All 
right? So we got a decimal value and that's okay. We don't always get an integer answer. Sometimes we will get decimal answers. So what I would do when you go to MyOpenMath, if you get something like that, make sure you round to two decimal places. All right, so I'm gonna go negative 2.6 and then I'll round that one up to a two because the next number was a five. All right, so we got negative 2.62. There we go. All right, one more time, right? And we're gonna use the distributive property again here. So I'm gonna take eight and multiply by the X and then eight and multiply by the three. Okay. Oh, don't forget your line. All right, so eight times X is eight X. Eight times three is 24. And then we still have a plus three on the end. We gotta do the same thing here. I have another parentheses, so I need to take care of this distribution. So we got negative 9x plus 72, right? Because it's a negative times a negative, right? 9 times 8 is 72. Negative times a negative is a positive. And then we still have a minus 8 on the end. Okay? Go through and combine like terms, right? The 24 and the 3 here can be combined. The 72 and the 8 can be combined. So let's see, we got 8x. 24 plus 3 is 27. Over here we've got negative 9x and then 72 minus 8 is 86. I'm sorry, 64. There we are. I don't know what I was thinking. Awesome. All right, now we're, we need to make a decision about what side we want the x's on, all right? So you just gotta make a choice, choose. All right, if you wanna put it over here, you can. I'm gonna choose to put it on the left again, all right? So I'm gonna add 9x to both sides, right? I'm moving the 9x over, so I'm doing the opposite. Okay, so 8x plus 9x is 17x plus 27. Here they cancel, and then we got 64. So I'm going to move the 27 over because remember our goal is to get x by itself, right? So now x is over here and I need to move everything else over here. All right, so I'm going to start with the 27. Go. 27's cancel. We've got 17x and I need to do 64 minus 27. We get a 37. Then we've got to divide by 17. So we get x equals, and again, I'll pull up my calculator here. So we got to do 37 divided by 17. We got 2.17, so I'll round that to 2.18. And there's my answer. All right, guys, that's it for today. Give the practice problems a try. Let me know if you've got questions in the Zoom chat. Have a great day, guys.